Hello, Queer Factor! Welcome back to Thursday. We're your hosts. I'm Jen. And I'm Chris. And happy, happy Thanksgiving! Gobble, gobble. Gobble, gobble. This week, we are going to be talking about the queer history in America, starting in the 1900s. Jen and I are going to give you a few important events that have happened each decade up until now. So enjoy. <laughs> All right, so starting with the 1900s, sexuality was just starting to become a big deal. And here comes Sigmund Freud, this crazy, wacky, sexy monster that uh, likes to talk about sex a lot. And he decided to publish the first book on his theories of sexuality. Now, what Sigmund Freud was talking about at the time was definitely controversial. Most psychologists in the field thought of homosexuality as a symptom of degeneracy of sorts. Whereas Sigmund Freud definitely thought of it more as a developmental thing. In 1914, for the first time, a dictionary recognizes the word faggot as a slur against homosexuals. And on top of that, in 1919, the military revised their code of conduct to make sodomy a felony. As we make our way into the 1920s, homosexuality definitely is starting to get a little bit more open and people are starting to become more aware. But with this brings more controversy. So in 1920, in New York City, there were 20 to 25 clubs opened, they were called personality clubs, in what's called Greenwich Village, predominantly gay part of the city. So these clubs uh, were harassed pretty frequently throughout the 20s, and in 25, 1925, police did raids and shut down all but three of these institutions. In 1935, Bessie Smith came out with a song praising butch lesbians. But at the same time, the first documented case of shock therapy being used to avert people from homosexuality was recorded. Now, the 1940s gave way to the World War II era. Now, this is particularly interesting to me, considering I live in San Francisco. But during World War II, there were a lot of Army, Navy people stationed in San Francisco. Now, they often got kicked out of the military because of being gay. Actually, it, it was mandatory that they got kicked out because they were gay. But the fucked up part is that they got kicked out based on class and not based on sexual orientation. So people looked at gay people not only as, you know, disgusting parts of society, but as a different class of people. It's just insane to me. And anyway, what's interesting is, is that because these majority of these gay men got kicked out of the army or the navy or what have you, they ended up just settling in San Francisco. And this is why San Francisco has become such a queer mecca of sorts. In the 1950s, the gay rights movement was well underway. Kinsey came along to suggest that sexuality fits somewhere along a sliding scale. And at the same time, two major civil rights groups formed, the Daughters of Belitis and the Mattachine Society, to really begin the civil rights movement towards fairness and equality that we're still fighting today. In the 1960s came the oh-so-important Stonewall Riots. It was the first time that gay people had fought back against police raids. The police raided them in 1969 at the Stonewall Inn, which was a gay bar. And yeah, for the first time, they fought those fuckers back. In the 1970s, twice. Twice, twice as many breakthroughs were made for us queers than the two previous decades combined. Several states began to repeal sodomy laws and to enact civil rights for homosexuals. And Harvey Milk was elected to office uh, to the Board of Supervisors in San Francisco, the first openly gay person to ever be elected. But unfortunately, this was all kind of came to a halt, I suppose, when he was assassinated only a month later. Although the 1970s has brought way to many advances in the gay rights movement, the 1980s kind of made that all come to a halt. The AIDS epidemic broke out, and it was considered the gay disease. They, everyone in society associated AIDS with gay people, and, you know, it was kind of sad because the AIDS epidemic broke out in the late 70s, early 80s, but was never addressed or dealt with. Reagan never even talked about it throughout his entire presidency at all. It wasn't brought up until 1987. In the 1990s, a lot of the legislation contradicted itself. Clinton actually signed the Defense of Marriage Act, which barred gay couples from receiving the same benefits as straight married couples federally. And Bush signed 
the good act kind of weird he signed the act um for hate crime statistics to finally be reported including acts against homosexual people and here we are in 2008 and we still can't get married but i still think we've come a long way and we will continue fighting <laughs> happy thanksgiving yes and we'll see you next week on queer factor <laughs>